Hi, I'm Dan. I'm the head brewer here at Adnams, and I'm warmly welcoming Jeremy from Utopian. Lovely to have you here. Thanks for having me. So, why are we here? <laughs> well, I mean, we're doing something quite special, hopefully. It's been brooding for a long time, hasn't it? Um, so, I think, I can't remember the first time I met you. It was in, probably at the Farums, like, hop, smelling the hops and assessing the, the hops. World's hop you were, series, yeah. yeah. Um, and do you, like, I mean, tell us a bit about Utopian and why you were sort of there with Charles Farm as well. Yeah, so Utopian, um, for those who don't know us, we've been going for about five and a half years now. Uh, we set up in mid-Devon with um, our main focus or purpose was to make uh, lagers, traditional lagers using 100% British ingredients. Um, so we've been working with Charles Farham and using lots of hops from their breeding program yeah. from the start um, and having great results with it. Yeah. Yeah, we love English hops. I think, you know, the history of Adnams has, you know, been built on, on English hops, particularly Fuggles. So that's why we've got some bitter, haven't we? We're tasting some Fuggles. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, we, we love what English hops can do for beer. Um, and I guess on the back of that, we, you know, we were talking about cast beer in general. Um, obviously, you've, you've come from a approach of... You did schooled in Germany, didn't you? So, you know, did, you, your yeah. methodology is German, so to speak, and you've got that history. And I think there's been quite a nice marriage of um, British brewing and having this collaboration. Um, and we were talking just about how maybe similar, actually, some of the, um, the German brewing culture is to actually British brewing culture. And maybe we're not so... Um, uh, not so, so siloed yeah, yeah. as we think so yeah, yeah exactly i mean that was that, that's where we came at it from isn't it you guys have been doing cask you've got this incredible heritage and uh, i mean cask beer is the history of of english beer um and you know we were talking about some of the fantastic beers that we've had in germany that have essentially come out of wooden casks yeah um and cask lager and cask ale actually exists as a thing in, in yeah. germany too so the idea was can we can we do our, it yeah can we bring our skill sets together can we come together yeah because i think the merits for me for cask and you know i was in munich quite a few years back but the thing that makes that serving style so beautiful for the beer is that it's less carbonated not flat yeah, because cast beer should never be flat, right? Um, but it's not so cold, so you have so much... The flavour intensity is higher, right? You're yeah. not hiding behind other stuff, so... Um, it's kind of a purist form, I feel. Yeah, of, Absolutely. Of, yeah. And, and you find quite a lot... Um, so, I mean, lager in this country is often viewed as being cold and fizzy. Yeah. But... It's it's not necessarily that way in sure. in Germany and yeah. in countries that have been brewing lager for ages. You know, I've been to beer gardens where they've had beer warmers, so you get your <laughs> your beer when it's served to you. It's actually too cold, so you stick it in a sink with some warm water, warm it up. Yeah, because because I mean that's where the flavor comes out, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And as long as you don't have any negative flavours to hide, yeah. right? The beer's got to be good. Otherwise, when you warm it up, you might not want to drink it. Anymore. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> so we are going to do then something between a kind of henna's and a kind of pilsner. I guess yeah. somewhere in between. We want we want malt character, but we want lots of hop character, um, and then obviously ultimately end up in a cask. Maybe some more hops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, could be a bit of a dry hop in there. Yeah. Yeah, I think the idea, I mean, a bit of bitterness goes a long way, especially in, in cask ale. It's got to have some bitterness. So we yeah. didn't want to really lowball it and yeah. go with a pure Hellas style yeah. lager. So it's got some hop character, which is going to carry through, I think, make it more drinkable. Yeah. More sessionable, perhaps. Yeah. I guess people might ask what a Keller beer is because we're kind of we're calling it unfiltered Keller beer. Yep. I guess um, I guess there's been a few brewers have made that that name a bit more accessible to people over the years. But essentially, I guess people have been using it for unfiltered 
sort of beer, basically, I guess, yeah. Yeah, so cellar beer um, is just a term from, for beer from the cellar. Cellar, yeah. So you haven't centrifuged it or filtered it, yeah. find it. Um, it's just naturally as the beer would be if you're drinking it yeah. right out of the tank. Which I guess it makes sense for, for well, why we want to call it that for like cask, because essentially it comes straight out of the tank, it goes in the cask, and then the job is finished in the cask, you know? Exactly, yeah, yeah. so that, that marriage works wonderfully. Yeah. Yeah, very exciting. Um, what do we think the beer is going to taste like? Well, it's quite a interesting for isn't it <laughs> we often have to write tasting notes before we've brewed the beer right we so <laughs> yeah so we're going to use loads of fuggles right so yeah. you obviously use lots of english hops um you like godiva you suggested we use some of that um yep. i haven't used it as extensively as probably you have so um relying on your knowledge on that yeah godiva's got this wonderful um in in yeah, within reason, I think it comes across as like lemon lime, yeah. uh, a little subtle fruit to it, um, and we use lots of fuggles as well. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a noble hop from it's England. Fa oh, it's uh, fantastic. I mean, the bitter at the moment, this yeah. kind of you get that kind of floral, a little bit of lemon, but also sometimes you get that real classic sort of black pepper. And I love that. Yeah. You know? Um, bit of spice, yeah. bit of herbal, yeah. bit of fruit. Yeah. Um, so yeah. complex hop, and you can see why the British brewing industry have been striving to try and find a fuggle replacement, right? It's really a gem, and you know, we, we're, we're still using it in our bitter, so yeah, yeah, I think that hop's great. It'll be wonderful. Um, so yeah, so, so in terms of aroma of the beer, we know roughly, we know the hops that we're using. Yeah. We're going to use... Uh, pale malt so it'll be sort of crisp bready yeah. um but not very you know we're not going to go for caramel notes or roast no. or anything like that keeping no. it nice and clean yeah subtly hopped but maybe a bit of a dry hop in the cask yeah so it'll be yeah noble in aroma first quenching in in the summer months as well because i think um that was partly what we were talking about, wasn't it? How do we bring... Because cars can sometimes, you know, I think we're all guilty of it when it's hot and it's sunny. People can maybe tend to change their sort of drinking experience. And so for the summer, having this really crisp cask lager, opening up that, you know, pantheon of what cask beer could be was quite an exciting prospect, right? Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, we're... we're both firm believers that casks should be drunk as fresh as, as we can. Yeah. And I think uh, the style, you know, brewing a lager and putting that in casks is going to go brilliantly because lager in in this country, usually it's consumed pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, there's a, yeah, exactly. people love lager yeah. out here and it's just switching the vessel, the format that you're getting it in and hopefully we'll introduce some, some new drinkers to the cask category yeah that'd be great yeah absolutely well i'm looking forward to this beer we haven't quite um started on process i think um decoction mashing um, yeah so i mean you've i don't have much experience with with decoction you know being a british brewer and, yeah of you know. course of course and uh, yeah so i mean decoction there's a lot of ideas around it that you know, it's uh, antiquated from a time when our barley wasn't good enough. But, yeah. Um, but we use decoction to create layers of flavor and lagers that, yeah. that you know, um, that really add complexity and yeah. interest to the drinking experience. So yeah. it'd be really cool if we can, if we can get a decoction mash yeah. to go through your kit. Yeah. Well, it's kind of amazing, isn't it? Really, the I mean, the the brew house is a German brew house and we're making cask beer on it already and um so it's kind of yeah. the the mash conversion vessel is set up to to do that so i think yeah are there any other process differences um i that think we're going to be doing i think um we talked about it before didn't we about like the nature of having a lager yeast in the cellar so yeah that will be interesting as well um and we'll be using the lager yeast in your open fermenters yeah so again very traditional you know 
uh, what when was the cylindrical conical like 1920s was it invented so yeah we are as a marriage of like innovation and traditionalism yeah, yeah. which is what great beer is yeah right if you lose sight of of the past of how we've yeah. been brewing beer for hundreds of years you lose out on flavor i think yeah very excited for oh, this. you might have to stay another day yeah <laughs> cheers cheers that yeah. wouldn't be the end of the world <laughs>